Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining us and, you know, just investing in yourself to learn something new today. So my name is Nazanin and I'm the Assistant Branch Manager at RBC Newcomer Specialist Team in Toronto. So we're very excited to be here today. Uh, we actually work very closely with Access Employment um, to the point that we share the same vision and value um, and passion for our newcomer community. And um, so we have a very important topic today, so which is facts you need to know about banking in Canada. I was a newcomer myself and I went um, through so many challenges and I know that moving to a new country is a major life changing event so there's so much to do so much to learn so that's why we are here today to provide you with some tips and guidance to help you get the better understanding of the Canadian banking system so we also have Ria Ragbeer my dear colleague um, our banking advisor and we're gonna hear from her very shortly we also have uh, Farah Mohammed, another banking advisor here and Felipe Boada will be joining soon and they're gonna be here to support us awesome so now so let me talk about what we have for you today. So here's the agenda of the day. So we already heard from Keisha and next I'm going to go over uh, RBC's purpose and vision. And from there, I'm gonna talk about RBC values, you know, to get to know RBC as an organization and Ria gonna introduce RBC newcomer specialist team. So, and then we are going to get into the main presentation. I will be talking about the basic Canadian banking system and the different uh, ways you can bank with. And I'm also going to show you how to view your credit score online. And Ria going to share the great tips and advice about how RBC can help. And of course, at the end, we're going to get uh, to your question. So as Keisha mentioned, please feel free to enter your question in the chat uh, box at the right bottom corner. All right, so before I just talk about RBC. Let me also introduce myself very quickly. Um, so I came to Canada in 2008. And as I said, I truly believe in newcomers helping newcomers. And um, actually, after completing my master's degree in finance from Ryerson University, I know their name has been changed. Um, so, and I actually joined um, RBC in 2011 as a part-time client advisor role. And in summer of 2020, I was lucky enough to join the newcomer specialist team and I really love this job because I get the opportunity to uh, present in the community and help um, other like newcomers and youth community and this is really really uh, fulfilling uh, and rewarding for me and so that's just a little bit about myself now as a proud RBCers I would like to talk about RBC purpose and value and as you can see um, so RBC purpose is helping clients thrive and communities prosper and our vision is to be among the world's most trusted and successful financial institution so all of our 86,000 employees are guided by one set of values so first is client first we always earn the right to be our clients for choice so the other is um, the second is collaboration. We win as one RBC, we are partners and we work together as one RBC to make sure our clients and communities prosper. So the other one is accountability. So we take our ownership for personal and collective high performance. Diversity and inclusion, which is really important for us as uh, we embrace the diversity for innovation and growth. So we speak up for inclusion, empower people to grow and achieve more. And I think that's why we are such a strong and um, uh, like um, successful organization. And the last but not the least is integrity. So we hold ourselves to the highest standard to build trust. So that was just a little about RBC that I wanted to share with you. And also, um, so we do have a unique program to help newcomers in their transition. So it's RBC Ventures. It's called RBC uh, Beyond the Banking page or Venture uh, RBC Venture page. So where you feel um, you will find uh, the, the Arrive. So the Arrive, they had a very great app. So you will get to know a lot of information about Canada even before you land. So as a source for the tools and resources, you may need include like information you can trust so the uh, expert guidance and so many offers so uh, i really um recommend you to check it out so you can easily scan the qr code on the screen so uh, so you can easily uh, download the app so they call it arrive and you can find so many great tools and resources there so now i would like to hand it over to ria to introduce uh, our team and introduce herself so before we get uh, to the main presentation thank you ria over to you Thank you so much, Naz, sh for sharing about Prepped. It's such a great um, tool, and you know it's available on the app, um, Apple and Google Play, so you can definitely download it there. 
So good morning again and welcome and thank you for joining us today and investing uh, in yourself by simply just being here and being on this incredible learning journey with all of us. My name is Ria. I am an advisor at the RBC Newcomer Specialist Team. I also arrived in 2008 uh, to Canada and eager to start my life and build a family and explore this wonderful country. That in itself, you know, it had many, many challenges. And when I joined RBC also in 2008, I quickly realized that RBC was a company that I wanted to grow with and continue my banking career with. So I highly recommend the same for all of you. Um, when seeking employment in Canada, seek a company that allows you to flourish and one that, that values you as an employee as well. So I'm really excited to tell you about more about RBC and RBC Newcomer Specialist Team. So RBC have created unique branches all around Canada. So we're not the typical style branches. We are one bank with many doors and ours is virtual. So we really pride ourselves on newcomer helping newcomers, uh, sharing our experiences and taking, back, taking you back to the challenges that we faced as newcomers. So everyone's journey is different. Therefore, we would all have different barriers and challenges that we can all share upon and grow upon. And our team, this is our wonderful team. We're all here today with you at this event. We're always here to provide the support, the guidance, the resources, and the information to the newcomer community, just to make your settlement in Canada as easy as possible in any way that we can. Yes, we appear as a small team, but we are a mighty team as we have such strong, uh, extensive support team throughout GTR. This way we can uh, continuously reach more clients and communities with our virtual setting. We do sometimes lean on the industry experts who are always willing uh, to volunteer their time and their expertise. And then we also have a lot of help due to the commitment of our community partners. So we're grateful to have partners like Access who have been our key partner through uh, since inception of this branch actually, sharing the same vision and passion uh, as us. <clears throat> they to envision a Canada where diversity is embraced and communities are flourishing. Having this joint mindset together, we're able to uh, help more clients and our communities with uh, value beyond banking. And we're also proud of the winning partnership, winning uh, with our community due to our presence, our team, and especially our events like today. Uh, we provide tailored events based on the host organization. With these events, we're able to provide advice on the Canadian banking system. We do know it varies from country to country uh, with the beyond banking pieces, especially providing the advice based on our knowledge, especially what today's facts uh, you need to know about banking in Canada. It does cover high level. However, my team and I are always willing to connect with you for more in-depth uh, discussions. So I do hope that you have a better understanding about RBC and RBC meeting place. Now for the highlight of the event, I'll hand it back to Nats to get us started. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ria, for introducing our team. You know, it's funny that we both came to Canada in 2008, right? <laughs> awesome. So now let's get to the main presentation that I know you're waiting for. So I actually want to start the presentation by, by asking you a question. So let's see how many of you can get the right answer. And here's a question. So what percentage of Canadians do you think were born out, outside Canada? So just take a guess. If you don't know, it's fine. So what percentage of Canadians do you think uh, were born outside Canada? So you can enter your answer in the chat box. Thank you, Ria, for the question. Yeah, just take a guess. Let's see. Okay. Anyone? Yes, please share your guess. Okay, I see someone saying 15%. 30%. They're very close though now. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's see. So, and here is the right answer. So, one out of every five Canadians is born outside Canada. So, that's actually 20%. So, this shows that we are a country of newcomers and we are really proud of it. And actually, that's why RBC has put a great deal of thought and attention into making it easier for newcomers in Canada to build a successful life here. So, uh, you know, like um, some of you, um, 
for some of you, Canada may be a totally different country with a different language and, and, and the culture that you may not be familiar with. I actually have spoken with so many newcomers through my work, and I always enjoy hearing what surprised them the most when they first arrived in Canada. So, um, so you know, about myself, like when I landed the first time, uh, I was really surprised. It probably same as some of you, I was surprised by the weather because coming from a four season country, I landed in February in the middle of winter, minus 20 degree. You can imagine like how shocked I was. So, and it was really a big surprise for me, even after 12, I, years of living in Canada, I still get surprised by the weather. But Canada is a really great country, obviously, like uh, with the loss of opportunity, uh, with limitless opportunities here. So Ria, maybe I can ask you if you can quickly share what actually surprised you the most when you came, when you just landed in 2008 in Canada. Yeah. I know I came in the summer, Naz, but I always visited Canada in the summer. So my first year in Canada, I wanted to um, experience uh, winter. And I was very excited for my first snowfall. So I think that the weather was, um, you know, very exciting and interesting for me. So I think that would, I would have to say the weather too. You're right. Thank you, Ria, for sharing that. So, and these are some of my favorite observations. Um, so uh, like about me, like before I came to Canada, I had never heard about the mortgage. I even didn't know what this credit card is uh, because uh, in my home country, we do not have credit card. And um, so, and you know, like um, is I love Canada because there's so many different cultures. And even before I, I uh, before I came to Canada, I never tried sushi or ice skating, but now I'm a sushi level. I'll, I'll you know, I Sometimes I crave for sushi and I'm actually a good, uh, I'm good at uh, ice skating. So I love to do ice skating. And this is something that I experience in Canada. Or for example, Niagara Falls was one of the other surprise for me because um, so the first time that I visited, uh, it was even actually bigger than what I thought. So no matter where you uh, came from, I'm sure as a newcomer, you all went through lots of challenges and, you know, you are, you are uh, planning to move to Canada. Um, like even if you're pre-arrival and you're planning to move Canada, so you're probably uh, getting ready for, uh, for coping some of the challenges. Um, so one of the challenges you may um, thinking of is understanding the Canadian banking system and, you know, the banking options. So I'm, again, I'm really happy that you're joining us today. And uh, so we're here to, you know, help you and we will be continue to be a, a supportive partner with you. So now let's get to the main presentation that um, is about like Canadian banking system. And I'm gonna talk about uh, all of this, um, you know, uh, topics that you can see on the screen to introduce uh, all of them. So let's just start with the bank accounts. So um, a checking account is for everyday use, like, um, and uh, is the first account you actually should set up once you're here. So uh, you will need the checking account for your daily transactions, like paying bills, uh, for uh, purchase, you know, um, interactions or issuing the check or uh, much more. And also you can have a saving account as well. A saving account is for the money you're not using day to day as some of the saving accounts can accumulate higher interest than a checking account. And we do have different type of saving accounts. We also have a US account, which is uh, for holding a US currency within Canada. Uh, for example, I recently received a hundred dollars US check, but I didn't want to convert it to Canadian. So I deposited it into my US account. So accessing your money is something that you need to know. So there are actually uh, many ways to access your funds. So you can use your debit card and make the purchase, for example, or you can access your money through the online banking, through the ATM or through the mobile banking. You also um, uh, can send money overseas with uh, through like on online banking for the smaller amount. I recommend you, you can do it through the online banking or for the, uh, or another option is you can do it in person at the branch. We call it wire transfer. Uh, something that you need to be aware of that is the insurance. Like there are so many different insurance available in Canada because insurance helps to protect you in unexpected circumstances. And there are several different kinds. So we do have, for example, the creditor insurance that protects you in case you are incapable of meeting credit obligations on your loans, for example, line of credits or mortgage, um, and includes like life insurance, disability insurance, and critical illness insurance. But 
And when it comes to the insurance, always make sure to consult with your insurance advisor to ensure that you are well informed on the products as well as the terms and conditions. And because you want to make sure that you make an educated and informed decision uh, when it comes to the insurance that uh, could uh, work best for you and your family. Uh, besides this insurance, we do have other type of insurance. So, like home insurance that protects you and your property against financial loss. We do have car insurance that protects you in the event of an accident, as well as the travel insurance that protects you if you need medical care while tra uh, traveling. So now I'm going to um, also touch on, on um, invest investment accounts. So we do have different type of investment account in Canada. So we have registered plans. Registered plans were designed by the government of Canada and they provide tax incentive to encourage investing for a special purpose. And we have non-registered plans, uh, which are more flexible and, and for funds that exceed your contribution limits for registered plan. So, but the key is to pick the right plans type and then pick the investment to go into these plans. So now um, I'm going to give you some of the examples. Like, for example, we have TFSA, we have GIC, RESV, and RRSP. So TFSA stands for tax-free saving account. So it is an investment account and, and any money earned on the, uh, the investment within the tax-free saving account is not taxed. So GIC stands for Guarantee Investment Certificate. So uh, it's a lower risk investment that offers a guarantee rate of return over a fixed period of time. So now what is RESV? So RESV actually stands for Registered Education Saving Plan. So this account helps you to put um, aside money dedicated to your children education as the federal uh, government also top up uh, your annual contribution by 20%, like up to a maximum of uh, 500 per child uh, for each calendar year to the lifetime uh, maximum of 7,200. So an RRSP stands for Registered Retirement uh, Saving Plan that helps you put aside money dedicated for yourself when you retire. Um, so now another important topic I want to uh, talk more about a little bit is credit. Understanding credit and credit score and how it applies to you is very important in Canada. So uh, building a credit, a good credit history and maintaining a good credit score in Canada, as I said, is very important because your credit history is a reflection of your ability to borrow money in Canada. So to keep your credit score in a good standing, you must pay back the lender on time. So whether it's a bank or a credit card company or even a car dealership. And um, if I want to name three most popular types of credit in Canada, I would say the credit card, personal loan, and line of credit. So um, if you're applying for any type of credit, so let's say if you want to buy a car and you want to apply for the car loan, or let's say if you're buying a property and you need to get the mortgage, or even um, you need um, to borrow money from banks to start your own business. So if that's the case, so many different people may need to look at your credit story, like or um, they're going to ask you to provide your credit score, including your bank or even the potential landlord or even the phone company. So many of you may experience that, let's say if you want to rent a property, your landlord may ask or request that you to provide your credit uh, history to them. So that's why it's really, really important to maintain a good credit history in Canada. And um, so just a little bit about loan line of credit and auto financing. Um, so in Canada, there are many ways to, as I said, to be financially ready for bigger purchases. Like you do not need to have all hand on cash uh, in order to make a bigger purchases like prop like property or you want to buy a car so you can you can uh, borrow money from the bank. So a personal loan is good for financing a merger purchase like a car. And the line of credit is actually an agreement with your bank that uh, lets you borrow money uh, for any purposes. So when it comes to the line of credit, so you can borrow money, it can be for different purposes. Maybe, for example, you want to buy a car, you want to buy furniture, or it can be for having extra cash flow for rainy days. And auto financing is when um, is when you buy a car. So 
when you buy a car, you do have two options. So you either uh, take out a loan, so which means that you uh, can borrow uh, up to the amount of the purchase price and paying back later uh, during the, the uh, specific length of time, or you can lease the car, which means that you pay a, min a monthly uh, amount to a leasing company for a period of time. Usually in Canada, it's one to five years. And then if you lease at the end of your lease agreement, so you can then either return the car to your um, dealer or you can buy the car actually at the price outlined in your agreement. So you have all of these choices. And mortgage is when you want to buy a home uh, or you want to buy a property. So you, uh, this is type of a personal loan. So you borrow money from uh, from the bank and it's a long term loan. So uh, the maximum amortization al allowed in Canada is 30 years. So you can borrow money and uh, paid within 30 years amortization, and the bank will take your uh, property as a collateral as a security. So now we've learned how important it is to maintain a good credit score in Canada. Now I want to show you how you can check your credit score through your online banking. But before that, so let's see what is credit score is. All right, so uh, your credit score is a number, so which is assigned to you that shows your ability to borrow money and then repay. It. So the higher score, the better. So as you can see in Canada, the credit scores range from 300. So 300 uh, means that either you are just uh, getting started. So is, if you're a newcomer and you just got your first credit card and you see your score is 300 is okay. It's just because uh, you just get started. Or it can be the meaning that uh, it can have, like, it means that you haven't been responsible. So that's why, again, it's important to maintain the good credit history because then uh, it can affect your credit score. And we have up to 900. And um, so according to the TransUnion, so TransUnion is actually a reputable um, a credit agency in Canada. So 650 is the average score of most Canadian have. So, but it can be from, from 300 to 900. So now I'm going to show you how you can check your credit score. If you're RBC client, you can check it out through your um, online banking. But if you're not RBC client, it's okay. So you can ask your respective bank to see how you can check your score um, through their online banking if they have that option. But we do have that option at RBC. So I'm going to um, just play this quick video for you. Awesome. So for any reason, if you were not able to watch the video, so this video is also available on YouTube. Thank you so much, uh, Ria. So Ria is uh, just sent the link on the YouTube so you can check it out later on. Awesome. So the next topic is uh, the different ways you can bank. Um, so as I said, there are different ways you can bank um, in Canada. Um, so, for example, you can access to your um, online banking, you can access and, and manage your money um, through mobile banking, um, you can download the RBC mobile app, again, if you're not with RBC, so uh, just download your respective uh, bank app, so it's very convenient to manage your banking through the app as well as the online banking, you can use the ATM, um, you know, all of the ATMs around the, the country, or you can call our 1-800 number, or you can reach out to our customer service, um, 
or you can also visit our branches across Canada. So over the past two years and then since COVID has started, so actually RBC tried to minimize our face-to-face -face interaction to protect our clients because the safety of our clients and of course our staff are really important at RBC. So we actually have different channels to connect with you. So if you need to talk to advisors, so you have the options uh, to book a call phone, call appointments, or even the virtual appointments. And recently RBC has been introducing a new tools um, like remote ID verification and remote account tools. Um, so uh, basically, if you would like to open an account, you do not need to visit um, anyone in person. So we are able uh, to help you and set up your accounts, your online banking, your mobile banking, all remotely. I will be sharing our contact information at the end. So if you need, if you have any question regarding this or if you need any advice, so uh, we will be more than happy to assist. All right, so now I would like to hand it over to Ria to um, talk more about how RBC can help. Thank you, Ria, over to you. Thanks so much, Nas, especially for sharing the different ways that you can bank. It's, it's really important that you know the different ways at your respective financial institution and find the one that's most convenient for you. So thank you so much for sharing that, Nas. So today I wanted to talk about how RBC can help you. Uh, we're able to help you manage and thrive in your day-to-day -day life. We also wanna be there for you as you build your dream home in Canada. And as you establish a comfortable lifestyle that reflects your goals and your own values. Family is important to us just as it is for you. So we would like to assist you when you are taking care of your family. And of course, when you're planning for the future. So for all these major milestones in your life, RBC offers you a variety of tools and solutions to help you make your financial uh, life in Canada as easy to manage. So from the online to the mobile banking or the telephone support and then one-on-one -on -one service, we're available to support your needs every step of the way. So let's get started with the first one, which is the day-to-day -day, um, activities. So our day-to-day -day banking solution is the easiest way to help you check in on your money whenever you need to, especially to pay your bills and to transfer your money and, you know, just transfer funds to your friends or your family. So whether you're on the go or you want to, to do it on your mobile device, you're at home or at work and you prefer to do the online, you can transfer the funds, pay your bills. You can also order checks all at the comfort of your home. So when my kids were in daycare, I loved having to uh, transfer the funds for my payment to daycare at the first of every month. And, you know, many clients also pay their rent this way via e-transfers. Of course, it's something that you would need to set up with your landlord and then ensure that they actually want to accept e-transfers. Some do prefer the checks, but we do have many landlords that prefer the e-transfers. So to share my most recent experience with you, a few weeks ago, I received my refund from Service Ontario. So everyone in Ontario got a refund for a license sticker renewal. And it was great uh, being able to do that mobile deposit of that check and to have the money uh, available rather than having to go to the branch. So that was an added convenience for me as an RBC client, of course. So our online banking solutions are in place to help you make your day-to-day -day living just more simple and convenient. So moving on when you are ready to build your dream home, RBC will be there for you every step of the way, offering a wide range of support. And you can start by also doing your home buying journey online. So online, you can use the mortgage calculators to help you build uh, your budget for that home and determine how much your monthly mortgage payments uh, might be uh, for that home that you're looking to buy. So let's say you're further along in the home search. Uh, you can also apply for a pre-approval which gives you the confidence to shop for a home, knowing that you can afford that, uh, that home that you really want and that home that you fell in love with. So the pre-approval, it's still conditional on verification, but it does lock in that rate for you for 120 days, giving you time to shop around and you get to hold on to that rate just in case the interest rate uh, does begin to rise. So when you're ready to connect with someone or simply need the advice and the handholding and that guidance for the whole process of the home buying, you can easily connect to a mortgage specialist online. So we even have mortgage specialist locators on our website. Um, Naz will share that link for you as well. Um, you just have to enter your address and a listing of all the specialists in the area will populate. 
So our market specialists, they are mobile, so they can meet you wherever that's most convenient for you. And now to cover off living your best lifestyle. Uh, that essentially means being able to get around, enrich your life, and feel confident with your finances. So let's say, for example, you're ready to buy a car. You can uh, first start by calculating the loan payments online, determining how much you can afford on that car that you want to buy. Uh, you can even compare the cost of buying versus leasing to see which is the best option for you. So when you're ready, you can just ask for the RBC financing right at the dealership. Many dealerships, they do offer car loans financed through RBC. So all you have to do is just ask them if they do uh, offer the financing. And then you'll be able to track your loan balance and the payments through your online banking. And you don't even have to sign the paperwork in branch. You can all do it everything at the dealership. So now you're ready to uh, start building that family and, you know, take care of your family. So on our next slide, you know, family is important to us. We know it's important to you and, and as our clients, whether it's your children, your parents or relatives living overseas, RBC offers many digital solutions to make it easy for you to take care of your family wherever they may be. For example, you can contribute to the RESP. I know Naz covered it in that slide that covered the basics of the Canadian banking through your online banking. So you can set up a RESP Matic, which means that you would draw a set amount of money from your account on a regular basis, and then it contributes to your RESP and your child's future education. So this makes it easy for you to save for that post-secondary education because you can contribute something as little as $25 a month. And um, we also have international money transfer. It lets you send money to over 200 countries around the world. It's all done through your online banking. Uh, you can send the money day or night um, from the comfort of your home. If you add your email address or your phone number to the online banking, you can send money. It can usually be accessed by the recipient within two to five business days, which is standard. Maybe you have a sister living across the country or a child at university right now. You can send money by that Interact e-transfer that I talked about earlier. Uh, anyone with a Canadian bank account or an email address or a mobile phone, you would be able to send them the Interact e-transfer. So it is a fabulous tool, which is free for all our RBC clients who have that personal checking account. It's faster than sending those checks and it's more secure than cash. Um, you, uh, you can do it online or going or do it through your smartphone. The person usually sending the money will receive an email or text message notifying them that you've sent the money and they can deposit the funds immediately. So, it, like I said, it's a great solution for landlord, babysitters, or even your coworkers when you do meet up for lunch. And now, uh, moving on to, you know, building that great future that's ahead of you. When you're thinking about your future, it's easy to find an expert who can work with you to build a plan for the years to come. So, RBC Financial Planners will help you whenever and wherever is most convenient for you. You can easily find one through our financial planning locator tool. So again, you can browse through planners in your area, you can read their profile, you can even read their credentials and their experience, and again, choosing the one that you're most comfortable with. So your financial planner, they will work with you to balance your goals with your vision for the future. They'll help you create security for yourself and your family to help you reach what's your most important objectives. So if you're investing and saving is one of your goals, you can contribute to a TFSA, a GIC as soon as you arrive in Canada to start growing your funds. Once you're working and earning income, you can set up a RRSP and uh, it's a great way to save for your retirement. Plus you can set up accounts similar to the RESP where you contribute uh, a monthly amount, a set amount that's withdrawn from your checking account. But if you're the do-it-yourself type person and you're interested in managing your own investments, you do have an option called RBC Direct Investing. Um, it is an online investing site allowing you to buy and sell investments, set up a wide range of accounts, and connect with other investors and get access to research, insights, and experts at any time. You can even set up the practice account so you can learn more about investing before you start using your own money. 
So we are approaching the end of the event, but I wanted to quickly summarize what we've covered so far. So on our next slide. <clears throat> So today we've talked about many uh, ways RBC and mobile solutions can help you manage all aspects of your financial life. Um, but from today, you know, from your day-to-day -day needs to creating that home and lifestyle, to taking care of your family and your future. We've also talked about how easy it is for you to connect with specialists and experts whenever it's most convenient for you. For example, our mortgage specialists, our financial planners, they're all mobile, so they can meet you wherever uh, that's most convenient for you. And we do have credit specialists available for you over the phone as well. We've also covered how you can get that telephone service in 200 languages for most times when you prefer to speak to someone in your first language. Whatever you need to discuss, the credit cards, the mortgages, to setting up investments, your day-to-day -day banking, you can reach out to uh, my entire team. We're also here to help you. Uh, or if you choose to speak to someone in your respective language, we can definitely connect you with that as well. So RBC is committed to helping Canadians succeed and especially our newcomers. For our branch, you know, we are designed for newcomers. So we're, we all have goals that we're trying to achieve. We're all here trying to live our best life while holding true to our values. Um, RBC is committed to helping each and every one of you by just doing, you know, creating a safe place for you to deposit your money. So we put in place many policies and procedures to help you protect your money from fraud as well. So I do hope from today's presentation, you, you can see how online and mobile, the telephone systems are all set up to provide that support and guidance and the resources that you need for your everyday financial goals and even the complex ones as well. My team and I are always here to support you as well, and we will share our contact information. So this brings us to the end of our presentation. We will definitely uh, like to take on your questions and we will share our contact information as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ria, for presenting, the, for the great presentation, you know, sharing lots of great tips and advice uh, about mortgage, about, uh, you know, the, you touch on an RESP account, how we can use the e-transfer. There are so many great features through the online banking and mobile banking, so um, you can just use them. It just makes our life easier. Um, so, like, e-transfer money, um, so that's one of the most important things because, uh, so, um, like, we get it a lot from our newcomers that how they can pay their landlord. So this is totally depends on your landlord, how they want to um, receive money, but it can be through the check. So if that's the case, you need to provide them like a posted checks, but if they're okay with the e-transfer money is a very easy and convenient way to send money as Ria explained, to send money out to your landlord. Um, awesome. So um, yes, we're here to help. So um, any questions? I already saw a great question in the chat box. So please feel free to enter your questions here. We are here to help and we would love to hear from you. Um, so the first two questions is actually regarding the, the pre-arrival accounts. Um, let me just read the questions. Um, so you would like to know that if it's possible to open account at RBC um, like before you arrive and the uh, answer is yes, so you can. Uh, it's just that it takes a time. It takes like minimum 10 business days. I would say give, a, give us like two, three weeks um, and you need to contact us and we in order to open the pre-arrival account, we need to refer you to our pre-arrival um, team across Canada, depends on which province you're moving to. And um, so, and also be advised that uh, pre-arrival account, it, it's only a, as a deposit only saving account. And you, so you cannot apply for the credit card or open the checking account, but you can open the saving account for the purpose of transferring money or wiring money before you come to Canada. And so once you're here in Canada, so you can visit uh, any branches with uh, providing the valid ID and then you can uh, access to the funds and then you can apply for the credit card. So, yeah, so the answer is yes. And if you need more information, feel free to reach out to me, uh, myself, or Ria, or Farah and Felipe, and uh, we will guide you from there. Um, yeah, the first question was about this, that they wanted to know um, if there are uh, eligible to open account, you just need to have your your status, like your pending status, like it could be like a work permit or like your corp document. So, but yes, absolutely, you can you can do it. But let's say if you're uh, moving to Canada next week, I would say that is a little bit too late to do it because it takes minimum 10 business days to process the account opening pre-arrival. Awesome. So, 
Yeah, so I saw two questions about this and I hope that I answer your questions. Yeah, another one, uh, can we create an account with RBC before moving to Canada? And let me know the procedure and how it transfer the funds. Yes, we already answered this question. So Ria, do you see any other questions? So I do not see, let me check the Q&A as well. Uh, yeah, another question, the Q&A is the same thing. So can we create an account with RBC before moving to Canada? So we already answered that question. Um, so there's another question here that asking about uh, applying for the credit card uh, without having any credit history or job. So this is a very actually great question, very common question. We get it a lot. So if you if you're just new to the uh, to Canada, if you're a newcomer and you do not have any Canadian credit history, you still can apply for the credit card. Um, so um, for the newcomer credit card, you do not need to have a Canadian credit history. So it depends on your status and if, like every person's situation is different. But for our newcomers, uh, again, depends on your status. You can get up to um, 2,000 credit limit, but if you also have a job here, it can be up to 15,000. Um, so, but yes, you do not need to uh, have a job or have a Canadian, um, you know, credit history in Canada in order to get your first credit card. And uh, getting back to the importance of, uh, you know, having a good credit history, uh, you need to get started, right? So that's how I recommend you, once you're here, start early, get your first credit card and start building your credit as soon as possible. Awesome. So let's see if there's any other question here. Okay, so um, does the pre-arrival account attract charges? Sorry, I, I didn't mention that. There's no charges at all. So it's a saving account. Um, that was a great question, a great reminder. Thanks for reminding me that. So it's a free account. Um, basically, uh, because you're not gonna have any transactions, is just for the purpose of uh, transferring money and then uh, why you're not here in Canada. So it's absolutely free and there's no charge uh, for the saving account. So it's called the saving pre-arrival account. Awesome. So there's just to add on to that pre-arrival question, Naz. Um, mm -hmm. Go ahead. So we do have to ask, uh, do let us know, connect with us, you know, obviously before you arrive and let us know which province you're going to be in. So that way we can connect you with that province uh, team and you can get, you know, the best um, advice and the best solution for you. Again, it would be the savings account. And then upon arrival, you would visit a branch or you can even reach out to our team and we can open that check-in account for you virtually. And then you would essentially get the, the package that we do offer to the newcomer clients. Again, making that account free for the year. Awesome, thank you, Ria, for adding that. Um, let's say if you're going to, yeah, you just need to let us know uh, which province you're, uh, you're moving to because as Ria said, um, so we have different, um, you know, departments, different teams for pre-arrivals. So we wanna make sure that we refer you, we connect you with the right, with the proper team. Um, so yeah, it would be great that you can include um, that into your emails that which, like what is your, your pending status and which province you're moving to. Awesome, thank you, Ria, again. Um, so uh, when is it uh, the best time to start saving for RESP as a new arrival? Thank you so much for the very great question. I would say that uh, the sooner better. So once you're here, you just need to make sure you have your, your social number as well as your kid's social number. Because in order to open the RESP account, we need the, um, uh, the parents like the, um, the subscriber or the primary caregiver who's usually the moms uh, or the subscriber can be different than the primary caregiver. But we need the subscriber who is the person who opened the account, um, social number as well as your the beneficiary who is the child's social number. So once you have your social number, so we are able to open the RESP account so, and again, it's a great account if you are, um, you know, saving money for your child's education, because as I said, the government top up 20% on your contribution for the maximum of $500 per child per year. And your child also may be eligible for the 500 um, learning uh, bond that we can just go through the details. Uh, so once you're here, but I would say the sooner better. And once you got the social number, so we can reach out to us and we can definitely help um, to assist you to set up your RESP account for your kids. Awesome, so. 
Okay. So, Ria, uh, do you want to also talk about one of the great features that, you know, I always put you in a spot on that because I know you use it yourself and you explain it always very well, the alert. Um, so, one of the uh, features that we do have available um, on online banking uh, or mobile banking that you may not be aware of that is the alert. So, it's really helpful to, uh, it really, really help you to not miss your payments or also to recognize if um, there's some unauthorized activity happening on your account. So, I would love to ask Ria to explain about that. <laughs> Sure, no problem, Naz. I do. I am a fan of the alerts. I am a great advocate for it too, um, in the sense that you know it does help with that day to life, a day to day life component. You know, just making everything so convenient and easy for you when you do your banking, especially just online banking. I personally, um, if I didn't work at the bank, and I said this before I started working from home, if I didn't work at the bank, I would never be at the bank because I did everything um, online and on my mobile. So with the alerts, essentially you are um, getting, you're getting firsthand information about your account just right when it happens because you're getting a text message for everything that happens in your account. So everything that goes in your account, everything that goes out of your account, uh, you set a predetermined amount of what you want to be notified on um, I'm a bit of a crazy person, so I set it at a dollar. So everything above a dollar, I get notified on, uh, essentially going in my account and out of my account. So when I get paid uh, this Thursday, I'll get a, a I'll get a text message saying I've got paid. Um, you know everything when my visa payment comes out, when I pay a bill online, you know I do get a text message, especially the fact if you know I do have a joint account with my husband. So when he makes a transaction, anything if he makes a bill payment, I do get notified. So it's just that added convenience of knowing what happens in your account, what goes in, what goes out. If there's something out of the ordinary, it helps with that fraud component as well. So if you, if there's something that's happening in your account, you've got a text message, especially if you're sitting at an event like with us today virtually, and it's saying that you shopped at Costco. Uh, for those of you that are attending pre-arrival, Costco is a wholesale store here in Canada. So. If you if you get a notification saying that you know you've spent five hundred dollars at Costco, which is pretty standard, then you know that um, something is wrong with your account. You know uh, you need to you need to call the bank immediately. So in that case, like I said, I love the alerts, and I know you always call on me for it. So thanks, Naz, for uh, allowing me to highlight it. So thanks. Very well said, because you explained it very well, even better than me. So that's why I want you to talk <laughs> about the alerts. Awesome. Thank you so Thank you. much Ria, for sharing that. It's really important to know all about the features that are available for you. Um, okay, so I see another uh, question here. So um, so I'm sending money to my friends and I'm uh, if I'm able to open my pre-arrival account now, will I be able to transfer into my personal account? Thank you again for the great question. So um, basically when you can transfer money into your pre-arrival account, but you cannot touch the money, you cannot access to the money since you come to Canada and provide ID. So if you're asking that, yes, yeah, so if you open the pre-arrival account, you can transfer your money, you can wire your money into the account, but while you're not here in Canada, so you cannot transfer that money from the pre-arrival account to your friend's account. So you need to come um, like here uh, in Canada, and then you ha you will have access to the money um, in your you know like pre-arrival account. Um, I hope that I answered your question. But uh, even though like uh, if you're transferring money to your friend's account, so again, so you need to be here in Canada in order to transfer from your friend's account to your personal account. So we cannot do that, um, you know, like while you're outside Canada. So perfect. So Ria, do you see any other questions? Um, another question here. So does checking the credit score, uh, like, you know, uh, repeatedly impacted my score? This is actually a very great one. So 
is actually depends. So if you check it yourself, like the way that we, uh, you know, uh, we showed you how you can check your credit um, score through the online banking. So that won't, um, you know, affect your credit score and you can do it every day, but you really do not need to check your credit every day. I would say once a month would be more than enough because it also takes 30 days that your information get updated. Um, and your credit reports, but let's say if any financial institution, um, they pull up your credit, let's say if you apply for any credit products, like credit card, car loan, line of credit, or even mortgage. So while the credit, your financial institution pull up your credit and check your credit score, yes, that can affect your credit, that can impact you. But if you um, like request for your credit report yourself for your personal, you know, reason um, is absolutely won't affect your credit. So. Naz, I just want to mention, uh, mm -hmm. Shikori is asking a lot of great questions. So I'm just going to ask her to connect with me um, mm -hmm. directly. I do have um, a lot of clients that I speak to from Nigeria. We sometimes FaceTime. Uh, you know, because it's a bit more convenient for them, we can definitely set up a WebEx call like this and I can answer all your questions for you. So feel free to reach out to me, Shikori, and then we can um, have a, a more thorough discussion. Awesome. Thank you, Ria. Um, yes, here's our uh, contact information on the screen. So you can email Ria. Uh, or myself, or you can easily scan the QR code uh, on the screen and all of the information will pop. So you can save it on your phone. I'm going to ask Farah and Felipe to also enter their email address in the chat box. So um, I'm going to take one more questions before we start wrapping it up. So I have a great question in the Q&A uh, box. So can checking account be open on the same day as we arrive and how much time will the bank uh, take to provide a debit and credit card? This is a very, very great question. Um, so once you're here in Canada, we can set up your account on the first day. You do not need to visit any branch in person. So uh, we can uh, open the account remotely as long as you have your, uh, you know, your valid ID with you. Um, so, and it, it just takes half an hour to set up your accounts. So your account will be active on the same day. You can go to the, any bank, deposit money in your account, but it takes around seven business days to receive your debit card. And also takes about like 10 business days to receive your credit card. But your account, your checking account can be, um, you know, open on the same day and, and will be active for you. You can just deposit money, but it took seven business days and 10 business days uh, for, um, you know, seven for the de debit card. You're going to receive your debit card sooner and it takes about 10 business days to receive your credit card. Again, if you need to know more information about the account opening process, please feel free to contact myself or Ria and we'll be more than happy to um, assist. All right, so I do not see any other questions. So we can start wrapping it up. Awesome, so I just wanted to thank you all for joining us today and I hope that you found today's uh, presentation valuable. We will be more than happy to keep in touch with you. Thank you for, for joining, thank you for your time. And I wanted to say a big thank you to my team, um, uh, for Ria to, for the great presentation, for Farah and Felipe to watching the chat, uh, sending great information in the chat box. And thank you so much, uh, Keisha, for having us, excellent employment. We really value this partnership. And thanks again for having us again today. So to wrap it up perfectly, I would like to hand it over to Keisha.